वेलकम टू द सेशन ऑन ऑर्गेनाइजिंग एंड इट्स एप्लीकेशन इन ऑर्गेनाइजिंग नर्सिंग सर्विस एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन एंड पेशेंट केयर इन द हॉस्पिटल टूडे आई विल डिस्कस दिस विद मिस सुकृति हु विल एक्सप्लेन अस रिगार्डिंग ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इट्स इम्पॉर्टेंस करेक्टरिस्टिक्स प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजिंग देन वॉट इज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन स्ट्रक्चर एंड वेरियस अदर आस्पेक्ट्स रिलेटेड टू ऑर्गेनाइजिंग एंड आई विल डिस्कस मोस्टली अबाउट द नर्सिंग सर्विसेज एंड द पेशेंट केयर इन द प्रीवियस यूनिट यू हैव लर्न अबाउट मैनेज कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ मैनेजमेंट प्रिंसिपल्स एंड इट्स एलिमेंट्स इन द लास्ट सेशन वी डिस्कस द फर्स्ट एलिमेंट दैट इज planning planning of nursing services and planning of nursing care in the hospital so today we will be discussing about second function that is organizing although we have discussed in brief with the concepts of management but still i will repeat what is the meaning of organizing organizing mean process which coordinates effectively the efforts of the human resource and utilization of all the available resources to provide cost effective quality patient care to the patients and the community by the hospital or by a health institution it is organizing in translating plan into action that is who will do the work where it will be done and when it is to be done with this brief background i will request ms sukriti to explain us the definition of organizing and organizing process so as we discussed that organizing is the second process second step which is the first part which sets the plans that we made into action it starts the plans and it provides a framework for not only implementing the plans but also for the other steps in management process that is for uh, staffing for directing and for controlling it is organizing which gives us a structure and a framework what organizing does is it set, uh, sets and establishes certain relationships in the organization these relationships are of authority responsibility and accountability and it defines the chain of hierarchy in the uh, organization deploys resources accordingly to the people who have to achieve certain objectives and so that they can perform their jobs and the targets of the organization are achieved the process of organization is divided into four major steps first we identify and divide the work that is through the planning process we made some broad objectives we take those objectives and divide them into smaller manageable portions which we call as jobs and then divide those jobs to certain people as per their specialization this is done so that burden of work is also distributed among people and duplication of efforts does not happen and wastage does not happen of resources second step is departmentalization we take similar jobs and then group them into a larger unit called departments and so that people can be allocated one particular department and they can work as per their specialization so one person con- continuously does one job which also leads to specialization thirdly we have assignment of duties within a department a staff member or an employee is allocated work as per their experiences their qualifications and their skills and competencies so that the productivity rises and they are able to perform efficiently and lastly we establish reporting relationships so that every employee knows from whom he or she has to take the orders and commands and to whom he or she has to report back when the work is done thank you for explaining us 
the process of organizing as ms sukri ha sukriti has rightly explained you that in the hospital also we have de various departments which do the specialized work there are specialized staff who do the job that means an organization will have specialized people to do a specialized job with specialized qualification in hospital life we have specialist doctors gdmos nurses paramedicals pharmacists radiotherapists physiotherapists occupational therapists extra they do their specified job as per their job responsibility so let us now understand what is the importance of organizing and what are the principles of organizing ms sukriti will you please explain this sure uh, so when we talk about importance the first and foremost importance of organization is that it helps in uh, effective administration because it clarifies the relationships it removes confusion and doubt from every employee's minds and therefore it increases the efficiency and the uh, wastage is reduced and execution is more smooth secondly it also helps in optimum usage of the resources since we have decided who will do what job we can understand what resources they may require and allocate the resources accordingly this makes sure that everybody gets enough of what they need to perform the job no less and no more this reduces wastage reduces duplication of efforts thirdly it provides structure to all the other functions of management when it comes to staffing or directing or controlling it is organizing which gives us a structure say in terms of authority who is my supervisor he or she will only direct me or control and do my performance appraisal also so these relationships are defined at this stage only then it helps in growth and development of the uh, staff members and of the employees because they know what do they have to do they we can give them training accordingly which also helps in job enrichment they feel better and more comfortable in doing their job and also there is the concept of delegation which we will discuss further as well that is some authority is delegated or handed over to the subordinates to do the job this also boosts their confidence and gives an increase in the creativity in what they do and also it leads to growth and expansion of the organization since we have very clearly defined relations in the organization it becomes easy to change modify and add to certain different job profiles or portfolios and where to fit them we are very clear about it so this also leads to expansion of organization and fast adaptability in the changing environment uh it's uh, i think it is clear to you what is the importance of organizing and what are the underlying principles of organizing we will further discuss about the organization structure also first let us come to hospital as an organization all of you are working in a hospital and it is an organization which it's a social organization part of a community which is being established to provide need based quality healthcare services to the patients but hospital is an organization where the output cannot be measured in terms of the money because it is not money generating organization the output is given in the form of good health the how much productive the person will be to the society in the long run the productivity of the person can be measured then quality standards are being measured there are standards of excellence which are being followed by the hospital to provide the cost effective quality care then all the hospitals are the institutions which are always ready to provide basic care handle emergencies and the disasters they provide comprehensive patient care to the 
community and to the people what are the services the hospital provide i think all of you know the services which the hospital provides are divided into main four clinical and the nursing services support services utility services and administrative services i have shared a presentation with you in the whatsapp group i think all of you have gone through that and you have gone through the unit also and all of you are working in the hospital you can divide these services in these four heads and then subdivide the services under these four heads again what types of hospitals we have we have teaching hospital non teaching hospitals we have government private autonomous voluntary hospitals we have allopathic hospital ayurveda unani homeopathy hospitals then specialty wise orthopedic cardiovascular maybe respiratory all type of specialty hospitals are there then large hospital small hospital tertiary hospital district hospital there can be according to the function that means the type of hospital can be according to their function ownership system specialty and size what are the functions we will just review already i have told you but we will again review it to provide comprehensive quality patient care handle emergencies and disasters maintain all the medical records or you can say in today's term hospital information management system we will study in detail maybe later we will integrate this and uh, you must have read the unit also on, on hims then provide providing referral services specialized services to the patient teaching training and the research activities are being carried out implementation of all the state and the national health programs then health education and immunization services center of excellence and nowadays the telemedicine and the outreach services are also being provided by the hospital and nursing services are one of the most important part of your hospital services because nursing services are being provided 24 into 7 by nursing department and they plan their services within the framework of the hospital philosophy and the policy and the plan with objectives are being set by the nursing department and then all the activities are carried out reviewed monitored supervised and evaluated there are certain policies administrative policies personal policies financial policies which are being followed according to the your own institution according to the ownership if, if it is a government institution then government policies are being followed if it's a private institution they have their own policy autonomous institutions they follow some of the government policies or they may have few their own policies also voluntary organizations have their own policies then hospital utilization what is hospital utilization and why it is important the hospital utilization is usage rate of particular healthcare facilities and the services by the community and the people the rate of utilization what is the bed occupancy rate how many days the patient occupy your beds what is the cost per patient what is what is the cost per bed how much cost is being done by for the staff who are being posted so it all depends upon your hospital utilization as in the beginning i told you hospital is an organization which do not give the profit in the form of money it gives profit in the form of good health and the productivity of the people that's why sometimes the people administrators say 
hospital is always demanding money and utilizing money it's very costly uh, organization which always demand money but do not give any return but one should understand it's a social organization and health cannot give you money but it can give you good health and good people to work which will be very productive in the social activities and they will give good products to the community there are certain factors which influence the hospital utilization maybe availability of the beds in the hospital services provided by the hospital the type of population comes to the hospital then means of transport and communication distance of the hospital from the community morbidity and mortality pattern of the hospital facilities to the staff type of staff available there there are certain internal factors which influence your hospital philosophy hospital policies and plan hospital layout hospital equipment and uh, supplies available there type of staff available there trained staff or experienced staff is there type of services if quality services benchmarks are being followed or not methods of payment by the patients then efficiency of the hospital is being uh, what is the trust or the what is the efficiency or what people think perception of the people about that hospital they these are some of the factors that influence the utilization of the hospital services that's why you must have seen nowadays the nabh accreditation is being done in the hospitals also to show that yes the quality benchmarks are being followed in the government institutions also in most of the private institutions they have accreditation system so in brief this was the administration of nursing services then organization structure i have shared an organization structure of ministry of health and family welfare in your uh, whatsapp group you can go through that i hope some of you must have seen the organization structure of your hospital in case you have not seen you go back and collect the organization structure of your hospital and see and what we are telling you try to understand what is your organization structure what information you can get from your organization structure what line of authority you can understand what is the hierarchy and line of communication in your hospital and how they coordinate with different departments and even with the school or college of nursing organization structure is a framework within which managerial and operational activities are being performed by an organization with this background i will request ms sukriti to explain us meaning advantages and limitations of organization structure uh, sure and uh, before that i would uh, just like to go through some principles of uh, organizing which are just the guidelines that help us in developing a good organizational structure these are the principles that we must keep in mind if we want our structure to come out sound and effective firstly we have principle of objective that is every organization functions to achieve certain planned and predetermined objectives which we defined in the planning stage so these objectives must be clear they must be achievable and realistic they must be measurable and be understood by everyone in the organization without any confusion secondly we have principle of specialization that is work should be divided into smaller portions called jobs and allocated to one person to uh, like one person should have one job as per his skills and competencies so that he becomes specialized in doing that thirdly we have principle of hierarchy that is there is a superior subordinate system that is followed so the organizational structure should have a pyramid like appearance and that is what is called as a scalar chain also fourth we have principle of unity of command which is also one of the management principles given by henry fayol that is one person should receive instructions from only one superior fifth we have 
principle of span of control. Span of control means the number of subordinates that one superior can effectively control and manage. This span of control defines how many levels of management we will have and what the shape of our organizational structure will look like. I will just like to add here to give an example to them from the nursing department like at the top you have one nursing superintendent or one CNO is there then under that there is one super nursing superintendent then there will be one or two deputy nursing superintendent according to the number of the uh, beds you have in the hospital then you will have four to five ANS under one ANS there will be five to six senior nursing officers under senior nursing officer there can be 15 to 20 staff nurses i think what uh, this sugriti is like tra yes. trying to explain you that is span of control how many people are there you can see it has become a pyramid top if you make it will become like a pyramid or a triangle right and so how many people one person is managing that is what is termed as the span then we have the principle of centralization versus decentralization which is again one of the principles of management as given by Henry Fayol which we discussed. So centralization means how much concentration of power and authority is there towards the top and decentralization is how much authority is dispersed and given among different units, different departments or different individuals at all levels. So in terms of emergency situations, it is uh, more advisable to have centralization whereas routine things are more decentralized mm -hmm. or setting up of objectives, key uh, objectives is more centralized towards the top whereas execution and how to achieve those objectives is more decentralized. So there has to be a balance. Then we have the principle of delegation which, is, which means that assigning authority to the subordinates to act within certain prescribed limits and boundaries. We will discuss it in further detail also. But this le uh, leaves the subordinates with greater authority to take decisions which also helps them to feel more uh, confidence and boost the creativity and also gives uh, more free time to the managers on the top. Then we have principle of continuity. That is, the work should not stop. We should have provisions and structures in place that due to one person or one department, the work should never stop and it should go on continuously. Then we have principle of communication. Communication should flow from top to bottom in terms of the instructions and orders and also from bottom to top. If any grievances are there or if any feedback is there, that should also be heard by the top management. So it is a two-way communication. And lastly, we have principle of balance. That means in all things, a balance should be maintained and nobody can misuse any authority or shy away from responsibility. So these are certain principles which help us to design a good organizational structure. What is an organizational structure? It is a framework which tells us how the work, how the information and how the authority flows within an organization. What is the path and direction that this thing follows? It defines the relations between different people, between different departments and jobs and different resources that are allocated in an organization and this allows for smooth functioning and execution. This also makes sure that everybody knows what is their accountability, what is their authority and to whom they are responsible and answerable. As an organization grows, it is very important that a good well-defined organizational structure is in place because if you have two people or three people, it is easy. Organization grows it becomes even more important to have a well-defined organizational structure because with two or three people, it is easier to communicate and to coordinate. But as the number of people in an organization keep increasing, 
the contact decreases and therefore it is very very important that it is very well defined uh, you must have seen uh, when your hospital was very small or if you are working in a small hospital the things are very different there is clear communication is there more in interpersonal relationship is good people cooperate with each other it's a simple organization but as the hospital expands and becomes complex the things also becomes complex sorry today we are facing some problem i hope it will be okay with you we are resuming it so in a complex hospital the things will be different what sukriti is trying to explain you right and uh, lastly it is the span of control that we just discussed which will also determine what your organizational structure looks like so how many levels of authority you will have how large will the pyramid that is the organizational structure will be are there any limitations of organizational structure uh, so one limitation that you can say is that it very uh, it formulates everything into very rigid roles the more traditional organizations tend to have a more fixed organizational structure and what it does is if as a somebody who is a subordinate i have some opinion i have some creative idea or a new innovative idea i cannot implement it directly and i will have to go up through every level in the structure and to reach to the top who will take a decision and then they will communicate a decision all the way back through every level to the bottom this leads to a huge lag and also it may reduce the creativity that we get from the people at the bottom and this therefore we may have a loss of innovative ideas that may get drilled down however nowadays we see in more newer organizations that are coming up there are more flexible systems and the lines are not very clearly defined okay thank you there are two types of organization formal and informal i think where the hospitals are formal organizations that means they have a formal organization structure formal line of authority line of communication the relationships are being defined there is a principles of organization are being followed what sukriti has just now explained you and informal organizations are the organizations which are being formed for some personal or the social issues which are do not have a formal structure i will explain her to uh, uh, give us a brief what is the difference between formal and informal organization sure so a formal organization is the one that is made deliberately by the administration or top management which is defined by certain rules and policies and guidelines which everyone must follow and it is made to achieve certain objectives whereas when we talk about an informal so uh continuing further there is an informal organization which is born spontaneously and not made deliberately like a formal organization it is made out of the social interaction that people uh, perform with each other and it is made inside a formal organization so having a formal organization is necessary for an informal one to even come up so in a formal organization authority is given to people by their position say i am somebody at the top of the leadership ladder or the hierarchy then i will have certain authority whereas in an informal organization authority is given to people by their personal experiences or their personal qualities or the way of they maybe the way they speak or the way they conduct themselves so it is not given by any well defined um, structure there are certain rules and regulations that one must follow in a formal structure if you go to an organization when you where you are an employee where you work you are bound by certain rules you are bound by certain contractual agreements also 
so which you have to follow and if you do not follow the rules there may be disciplinary action or there may be penalties or of financial or in financial or non financial nature yeah. whereas nothing like this happens in a informal organization in informal organization behaviors are defined by the uh, culture and by the socio psychological aspects of the members there which are there it is made to uh, achieve and satisfy certain personal needs like friendship or needs of uh, affiliation for the people social needs for the people thank you sukriti i think we have very nicely explained us what is the difference between formal and informal organization there are elements of delegation what we are being uh, repeatedly telling you what is authority what is responsibility and what is accountability i will just request sukriti to explain us the different between difference between these three term it is very important for you to understand what is the difference between these three terms so the key difference first of all the meaning of these three terms authority means the right to command or to give instructions or orders as your superior would have the authority over a subordinate that is the superior can give instructions which the subordinate must follow so the subordinate we say has a responsibility responsibility means there is an obligation to perform a certain task or an activity that is assigned to me and accountability means that answerability for the outcome of the particular task uh, authority rises from the virtue of the position somebody may be sitting at the top of chain and so he has the authority responsibility comes because somebody is asking me to do something so a delegated authority leads to the generation of responsibility and accountability further comes from responsibility if i am responsible if my senior tells me to perform certain activity so i am responsible to do it and whether i do it properly or not i will have to give the answer to the senior so that is my accountability which came because i was responsible that means whatever the job responsibilities are given to the employee they are answerable or accountable for that job right so you can think of accountability as answerability yeah. when it comes to authority it always flows from top to the bottom that is a superior will have authority over a subordinate and the other two responsibility and accountability flow bottom to top that is subordinate will be responsible for carrying out the instructions and be answerable or accountable to the superior not the other way around i think uh, now it must be clear to you what is organizing what is the importance of organizing principles which are being associated with the organizing difference between delegation authority and responsibility organization structure and what are the objectives of organizing nursing services now what is the objectives of organizing patient care i think this topic is not new to you even in your first year you have uh, read these things we will just discussed in brief about this basic objective of your patient care is to provide comprehensive quality patient care to the patients who come to the hospital or who are working in any health organization and there are certain factors which influence the patient care that is your total number of patients total number of beds in the hospital degree of the illness of the patient then needs of the patient will depend upon the degree of illness so needs of the patients type of services your hospital provides facilities and the resources available in the hospital total number of staff their experience their education it all in influence the patient care then method of patient care that is your team method functional method patient care method or the case method then hours of work how motivated your staff is then 
good ward and the hospital management policies and the plan design and shape of your working place like in the hospitals there are different type of wards in some the sister can see standing on the center she can observe all the patients but in the private wards patients are in individual rooms so you can say there you need more staff because one or two staff cannot see all the patients and they cannot monitor the patients so it again depends upon the design and layout of the your wards and the hospital then we have discussed about the staffing in the last uh, uh, session what is the steps or the process of staffing from recruitment till retention i think all of you will review that and remember all the steps of staffing most important is your time schedule or what you known as your duty roster is being made in some hospital it is centralized and in some it is decentralized centralized means your head nursing superintendent will make in the overall hospital full duty roster is being made then it is given to the ans departmental heads and they can make little bit modification they can do as per the some urgency or exigency of work but in the decentralization your ans or the senior nursing officers make as per their wards or as per their unit the, there are certain principles which needs to be kept in mind when making a duty roster you have to see consider uh, what are the busy days consider the busy or the less busy days or you can say less busy departments and less busy departments because you have that limited human resource you have to see that all the departments all the patients in all the departments get 24 into 7 services that means sisters are working in the three shifts so in three shifts how you can provide the care if some departments are busy then you can give more staff even in the evening or night if there is a less patient load you can uh, switch over some staff to the busy department or the some days are very busy especially the post op days or pre op days or the admission days are very busy so you can see how you can rotate the staff and about the reliever if suppose suddenly someone falls sick or someone has taken leave how to arrange for the reliever that is very important to see because in most of the hospital extra reliever staff is not being given they have to see and do arrangement within the departments only then equal distribution of work equal distribution of duty hours equal distribution of shift should be taken care of then it considers specially the education and the experience of the staff suppose you have new staff you will not like to post her independently maybe in the evening or night because she is not yet well aware about policies how to take care how to handle the things how to coordinate with different departments it's better to post her with some senior personnel and when she gained experience he or she gains experience then you can post them in the independent departments or suppose that some staff is posted transferred to some new department and she don't have any experience of working maybe in the neurosurgery no experience of or cardiothoracic the specialized departments they do not have experience so it's better to post them with some senior person who has some experience then equal offs to be given night off to be uh, after night duty the prescribed off have to be given equal number of offs to be given to all the staff and nowadays there is a ccl is there then el is there uh, their maternity leave uh, other leaves are there so you have to see how you give suppose there are two or three staff comes and they apply for earn leave or ccl you have to see how you can give equal number of ccl maybe if they have demanded 6 months you will not give 6 months maybe 2 two, two months you will give in rotation to everyone so you have to make those arrangement internally then do not count the students in your uh, duty rotation because they are there to learn and sometimes they will help you also in emergency this duty rotation plan should be made in advance it should be rechecked 
and if suppose anyone says they need some due to some medical reason or family problem or children problem they want some change of duty that can be taken care of so it should be rechecked and reassessed before giving to the ans or the senior nursing officer to the staff who is working in the hospital then it is very important to see these things are being taken care of because this will help you to increase the satisfaction and motivation of staff then patient assignment are of four type functional method functional method means it is not applicable in our country it is mostly in abroad that like one sister will take care of dressing in all the hospital another one in giving injections another one giving uh, maybe doing some procedures or giving medications so the spe <coughs> specific uh, <coughs> excuse me so specific function is being allotted to that nursing staff and they will carry out for all the patients in the hospital case method is complete care is given to the patient in all the shifts mostly in our country we are doing given the few patients are given maybe 5 or 6 but in our country it's more the patient sister ratio is more sometimes sisters are looking after in the morning duty 25 to 30 patients per sister and evening and night all the patients 50 to 100 patients are also being given care then team Uh, method is where there are different levels of nurses nursing aid is there gnm are there graduate nurses are there clinical specialist are there again this team method is not applicable in our hospitals mainly in some private hospital there are the nursing aides and the professional nurses who are giving care the then according to their qualification they will be given the duties that like nursing aid will help in the basic pro care of the patient the gnm will do the basic procedures but professional nurse the bsc and masters will do the advanced procedure and clinical nurse specialist will actually plan the care and monitor the care then patient care system is there will be a clinical nurse specialist who will plan the care for the three shifts and other sisters will follow but she will monitor the care then there are the certain patient safety say safe environment and biomedical waste management should be taken care of this is very important feature of quality patient care then evaluation of nursing care i think in your first year in nursing foundation you have read about quality quality assurance standards of care i most of you must able to recall it there were three type of standards input process and outcome standards and nursing audit is carried out nursing audit is of two type retrospective and the current that is present uh, nursing audit what is going on you will go and see actually retrospective is going through all the records and then doing the audit so these were some of the basic concepts for providing quality patient care to the patient in the hospital or some of the most of the things even applicable in other settings of the health institutions also so in nutshell today we have discussed about organizing organizing nursing services organizing patient care in the hospital and the basic principles behind that organization structure and its advantages and limitations and what are the uh, factors which influence the quality patient care i hope this is clear to you and still if you have any question you